Hey guys, welcome to another vlog, uh, driving vlog video. Um, it's been a while since I've done the last one. I've not been back to Cambridge for uh, two or three weeks because my parents are on holiday. So yeah, uh, I've been long overdue. I've been looking forward to doing another video. So yeah, it's uh, Amazon's been going great for this month so far on about £7,000. Um, and we're on the sort of 20th or 21st of April so can't complain too much about that pretty awesome and yeah guys so just to say my name's Simon I'm a six-figure Amazon seller sell on Amazon in the United Kingdom I also sell into Europe as well from the UK um, I do roughly between sort of eight and ten thousand a month profit normally um, and this is just my sort of a rambling sort of one hour video where I talk when I'm driving uh, just talking about Amazon and business and things like that. So if you're new here, welcome. Um, if you're an existing viewer, welcome as well. Thank you for, both of you, thank you for joining. Um, yeah, awesome. So obviously got to watch out for traffic as well. So that's the main priority as we slow down here. But yeah, so Amazon's been going really well overall. We've got some crazy motorcyclists coming up on the right here. Um, who apparently, yeah, racing up a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so can't complain really. Um, I'm struggling to keep stuff in stock. You know the usual thing. Need to be get better stock control actually. But yeah, seven thousand this month so far. My goal is to get to ten. I'm right on target. Just hit it. You know, uh, I'm gonna have some expenses as well. But yeah, really good. So what have I done this month? Um, I guess the biggest change for me this month was, um, and I've already done a video on this already, is I'm changing my repricers, my repricer software from STK to Profit Protector Pro. Uh, and that's gone really well. Uh, it did take me a while to move everything over just because I wanted to kind of do it one by one. Just I thought, well, since I'm repricing, changing repricers anyway, I may as well evaluate every single SKU that I'm selling just have a look, set my min maxes correctly, evaluate the listing, you know, maybe have a bit of a clear out as well. Um, and yeah, just do that while I was also doing the repricer. And that's gone really well, it's, it's a great repricer. Um, I've already done a video on it, I'll probably link it up here. Go check it out guys, it's really fucking good. Excuse my language. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's way better than SDK in my opinion. So that's probably the biggest change I've made this month. Um, I've been doing YouTube obviously as well. Um, I've got my free Discord guys. If you want to, you know, join my free Discord, come and chat, ask questions. You know, people are using it all the time to sort of chat, ask questions. It's great. You know, obviously trying to build up a really good community in there. So if you want to get into FBA or if you're already into FBA, you can come and join there. Oh, we're stuck behind a tractor. Oh my God, I hate tractors. <laughs> Better than horse carts though. <laughs> God, horse carts are the worst on these like single lane roads. Um, yes, yeah, so what was I saying? I can't remember now. <laughs> um, yeah, Discord's been going well. Um, I had some crazy thing yesterday. So yesterday I took a day off. I had my friends over. We did a board gaming day playing a game called Frosthaven. It's like a super complicated sort of, I don't know how to describe it, dungeon crawler type game. I don't know anyway. That was good. Um, it's, and then I uh, went out for a Chinese as well in the evening. But yeah, someone messaged me saying, oh, have you uh, DM'd me from a, like a second Discord? And I was like, no, it's one of my members. And apparently someone has basically copied my profile and they're basically impersonating me on Discord, which is crazy. So they've called themselves FBA Mogul with two L's at the end. They've stolen my avatar and they're uh, messaging all my Discord members. So if you guys get a message from some random FBA Mogul with two L's on the end or whatever, be very cautious. Don't send money to anyone. Um, you know, guys, the only time I ever ask anyone to send money is after I've done a coaching call with you, and that is after the coaching call. So, yeah, um, do not send money to anyone who's DMing you or, or whatever, basically. Be very careful. You can, If you want to DM me, you'll find me as the, you know, the server owner and the admin of my Discord group. So you can come on there and speak to me directly. That way you know it's me. Yeah, so that's kind of crazy that someone's doing that. You know, you just can't do anything in this world without someone trying to exploit someone else. It's a real shame, really, but that's the way the world is these days. Someone's trying to obviously exploit my members. I assume it's a way to scam people. I'm not sure. 
and that's what I'm assuming but let's try and do an overtake here it's got a digger there actually no other than a tractor yeah crazy someone's impersonating me but well it's going to happen I suppose so something I'll have to think about so the weather is really nice today we've got a lot, a lot of motorcyclists out um, sun's out it's a bit cloudy but you know not too bad really and talking about the nice weather so one of the things I've decided actually I'm going to, I'm going to get into doing some more retail arbitrage um, I'm going to be filming myself doing that um, we'll see how that goes maybe I'll get kicked out of like Tesco or whatever um, but I'll be like secretly filming myself doing the screen recording on my um, phone using um, you know the software to scan like Bybot Go things like that so, so you can see how I do it how I search for products um, the deals that I find I think they're quite popular videos to be honest so that's what I'll probably be doing as the weather gets nicer because it's more fun to you know, drive around when the weather's nice and yeah so that's something I'll be incorporating a bit more into my YouTube channel and like TikToks and stuff like that as well I don't really do the other social readers that much I should be doing it but I don't um, yeah so YouTube's my main focus but yeah I'll be doing that anyway so that'll be something fun I did actually start filming one the other day I went out uh, a friend of mine Adam gave me a lead he's like Go to, go to Sainsbury's ASAP and find this deal. So I went out there because he found this amazing lead. Um, I won't say what it is, but it was like £44 profit per unit for a you know something like 300 or 400% ROI. So I raced out to Sainsbury's. Unfortunately, they're just very hard to find. I did find um, a very similar one that I made about £15 profit on. And I got a few consolation prizes, you know, a few, few other bits and bobs, but nothing like that, basically. Those are the kinds of the ones you want to go in and just see there's like six or ten on the shelf. Just go, whoop, I've made £450, whatever it is, you know. So, yeah. Um, and I actually think the price of those items, again, I can't say what it is, is going to go up because they're discontinued and they've like introduced a new model, basically, uh, that looks a lot cheaper. So, yeah, interesting anyway. Um, but, yeah, that's the good thing about having a Discord group with people that you can share leads and stuff. So... As I get more into RA this in, in the summer, um, you know, I'll be uh, sharing those with my friends and maybe putting a few uh, bolos out on the old uh, Discord group for uh, my members on FBA moguls. And bolo, by the way, I didn't, you know, I, I've seen people mention this in the past and I didn't know what it meant. I had to Google it. It means be on the lookout for, basically, I think. Or be on the lookout, yeah. Be on the lookout, yeah. So bolo. I hard to keep up with all the lingo these days. <laughs> so yeah, so that'll be something that'll be quite fun anyway, and hopefully boost the profits a little bit. Um, I'm not the biggest retail arbitrage person normally, but I do go out and there's some good deals on. So, but yeah, that's something I'll be incorporating. And I also need to start incorporating more stores as well. Um, you know, I tend to just stick to the supermarkets and things like that rather than you know, there's loads of deals like Farm Foods, for example, or B&M, or, I don't know, so many different stores out there. Like, I don't see anyone talking about Dunelm. There could be some good deals there, like in-store. Um, let me put the cruise control on. I don't have to worry about the speed then. So, yeah, there's a lot of, there's obviously a lot of stores available that you can go to. And, yeah, so my friend Adam, who I've interviewed a few times, we've done sort of a chatty podcast type thing and um he goes out all the time so he was a bricklayer um he's in his, his, pre in his previous job he now does amazon full time but obviously he's a sort of an active person someone who likes to be out and about um you know obviously in his previous job he was probably out and about all day and that's just i guess is just built into his personality and so ra for him seems like he just likes to do that you know he likes to be out and about doing retail arbitrage going out and doing that pretty much every day or you know a lot of days oh god did hit a pigeon <laughs> it was a suicide mission it just couldn't gain any i saw it come along and it just wasn't gaining height it was struggling um managed to just avoid it um but yeah so so yeah everyone's got different personalities i'm more of a i guess an introvert i prefer to be sat at the computer sort of coding doing things like that um, doing online arbitrage uh, Adam prefers to be out and about you know doing retail arbitrage so each you know there's 
there's room for everyone really you know um, and I, I do like to do retail arbitrage but more in the summer when it's a bit nicer outside and it's not so glum and dull um, at least that way if you're driving around in the sun and you find nothing at least you've had a, a nice day enjoying the weather rather when it's winter it's like you're driving around it's dark it's dull it's cold it's wet the UK is very wet at the moment <laughs> it seems to be raining all the time yeah, so, you know, it is, it, you can do Amazon in so many ways. And actually listen to a very interesting podcast. So there's a fantastic podcast, guys, that you should 100% uh, subscribe to or listen to or watch. It's on all the podcast platforms. It's also on YouTube as well. It's called Buy Box Bandits. And it's a couple of guys in America who interview people who do Amazon FBA. And they've done like two or 300 episodes. They've interviewed a wide variety of people. And, um, yeah, the latest guy they interviewed, and it, by the way, it's mainly aimed at Americans, but it's still very, you know, you still gain loads of knowledge from it and stuff, but obviously you need to take it with a tiny pinch of salt, knowing that when they're talking about the American FBA, that market's a little bit different to the UK, mainly for the velocity's sake in terms of sales and stuff, because there's more people. But yeah, he was talking to a guy who's been doing Amazon now since, I think, 2015, and he basically just does retail arbitrage. That's all he does for the most part. Um, and you can see that people, you can see how people scale RA. It's really crazy actually. So he's gotten to the point now where he's got, I think two or three shoppers. Um, I think he had more before pre-COVID, but in different states. And their job is to literally go around all day, or you know, eight hours a day, whatever they do, um, searching for deals in certain stores. Um, so he trains them, it takes, I guess, a month or two to be trained up. And then they um, go out and they basically buy, yeah, they know what to look for. They go out and look for new deals, I guess, as well, but a lot of replens and stuff. And yeah, they just restock the items and yeah, they do retail arbitrage full time. And they obviously make enough out of that, they can run a, a, an eight figure business. And also, obviously, they're paying the employees and stuff. I, I think they pay a commission. I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, so. Um, and they're very strict, you know, it's a very good, uh, you know, podcast to listen to. So that episode was very interesting as well. So that was cool. But it just shows you, you know, you can do retail arbitrage full time. Now, I know America's a little bit bigger, but, you know, you can definitely do it in the UK. Oh, we've got a guy on the left here in the field who's doing some um, metal detecting. That's awesome. For anyone who's not seen the series on BBC, uh, was a BBC series. I think it's a BBC series anyway, called The Detectorists. It's a great show, watch it. <laughs> um, I love that show, it's so good. Yeah, it's cool just to see a guy out there, obviously enjoying the weather, and uh, yeah, doing some metal detecting, although it's probably still a little bit damp. But yeah, going to that podcast, guys, it's always good to see people on there. Um, you just hear all the stories, it's very motivating. You can see, you hear about different strategies, different ways to do things, it's really good. But yeah, retail arbitrage, anyone can do that. Um, for a full-time living if you wanted you know it's a, it's it's a tricky thing to scale but you know you can get to the point where you get good enough that you could hire people uh, there's a guy who owns the mental picks discord group and by the way if you want to get into retail arbitrage the best group to join is mental picks in my opinion um, and because that guy is just like a retail arbitrage expert he now has people in the discord group who are full-time, or not, maybe not full-time, but they go out and they search for deals. So he's got virtual, not vir he's got assistants, not virtual assistants, who go out and actually search, you know, stores looking for deals for the Discord group. Um, anyway, if you want to join that group, guys, link in the description. I've just secured, and I think I'm probably the only person that I know of that's got a discount, by the way, a 30% discount for the first month of that Discord group. So it's normally £80 a month, which is a lot of money, but the value they provide is phenomenal. So you'd easily make that back and way more. Um, but yeah, it's a 30% discount, which I think it takes down to about £55. So if you want to test out a group or join that group and check it out, link in description, use the code FBA Mogul, save yourself 30% on your first month and get into retail arbitrage. But the other thing as well is they've been crushing the OA game as well. The guy's going hardcore on making this group like the best group on the internet basically for UK FBA sellers. Um, it's just, he's going absolutely nuts. So he's getting virtual assistants, he's got assistants that go out. He's, yeah, he's spending a lot of money, he's investing a lot of money making the group excellent. So 
join that group guys honestly you will not regret it there's too many deals on there even for me to buy so you need a lot of money to go through all those deals but yeah so yeah if you want to scale like ra as i was saying then uh you can do that 100 percent. you can do that as a full-time living if you're a person who likes to be out and about absolutely no problem i think you can do it in the uk i think you can make six figures no problem doing that and possibly i think i think getting to seven figures probably would be difficult but you never know so the one thing i do like about retail arbitrage is um there's so many just opportunities for just if the best opportunities i found with retail arbitrage are um ones where you, you need a bit of warehouse space but you can go in and like right now you'll notice if you go to all the supermarkets they've got all the garden stuff in there the grass seeds the gardening tools a little hose lock spray things you know all the gardening stuff basically because obviously summer's here now people are going to go out in the garden enjoy it um obviously once we get into sort of september end of september october time all that stuff will be reduced down because they want to clear it out for the next sort of seasonal item that's going to come along which is like halloween i guess and then um and christmas so they're going to clear out all that stock and you can buy all that on the cheap if you time it right you can you could do a national sweep with a van go around buying up all that stock i remember last year they did grass seeds that normally cost 10 or 12 pound a box they're like a quid and if you get that then you can obviously you can still sell that throughout the year but you can then save that till next year and then when summer come rolls around again you can uh, sell that for a bigger premium there's nothing stopping you selling it throughout the year that's the great thing about amazon it's such a vast uh has such a vast customer base that you can do that but yeah there's all these opportunities that you always get you know whenever you go into a supermarket look at what sales are on so and then you can think, well, if when they go on, when these items go on sale, um, I can buy them, especially if you time it right when they're on the real clearance uh, prices, and then I can just store them for a year, and um, you know, then I can just sell them. And if you just do that, you, need, you do need a bit of storage space. That's the only downside to the strategy, but you know, you can make a lot of money doing that. You know, a storage unit you can probably get for. When well, my one cost me two thirty a month, including insurance. And that's a 100 square foot unit um, so you could get something like that maybe a little bit bigger for 400 pounds something around that price and yeah that'd be more than enough to store because the whole idea really is that you can you know eventually once you've gone through one year of cycle a one year cycle of sales then you'll be clearing stuff out and bringing stuff stuff in so it's a constant cycle of things so yeah that's a good strategy and yeah you can definitely make a lot of money doing things like that um, but obviously you do need the storage. It's like getting into Lego, again, another specialism. You know, you can make a lot of money doing Lego, you just need a lot of storage to store the Lego, really, and just be willing to hold on to it for a year or two. But, um, but yeah, this, you know, you, when you think about all these sales that happen, and again, this is something I try and teach people as well, just look at the seasons, look at the sales. Like, what season are we coming up to now? If you have to think about a season, well, there's a few that I can think of. So we've got, um, obviously summer's coming up now. We're in spring, but summer is pretty much, I consider it to summer. So we've got people buying more like sun creams. And that's another great one, by the way. Sun creams, you get those discounted in the supermarkets. And um, sometimes you can get the really expensive brands as well, like P20 or whatever it's called, um, for really cheap, like three quid a bottle. And they go for 20, 25 pounds on Amazon. Um, so you can get those, but yeah, you've got summer. But also, what are all the kids doing? You know, when I say kids, what are all the 15 year olds and I don't know, 17 year olds? What, I don't know what age people do, but yeah, GCSEs, A level, you know, exam season's coming up, so think about what people buy for those kind of things. Um, there could be bigger, you know, just think about. I've got a lead that I found, well, my VA found actually, which is uh, a very interesting. I don't want to give it away because it's not very fair. There's a video game that has a terrible sales rank, except for a very specific point of time, a very specific point in time of the year when something related to that happens. And the BSR goes from really rubbish to really good. So let me think of an example maybe that will be, um, that I can give you without actually giving away the item. Let me have a think. I'll think about that as we chat. But, um, 
I'm just going to be careful on here because it's a lot of average speed cameras. Yeah, so, you know, there's all these sales and stuff. You've got exam season, spring, say, you know, summer coming up. So, obviously, things like sun creams are going to be doing much better now. Sunglasses, hats, shorts, T-shirts. I don't know, anything related to summer. People, What do people take on holiday? Things like that. Suitcases. Uh, all this kind of stuff is going to be more popular now and doing better. And the prices, will be, you know, demand will be going up, which means prices will be going up, hopefully. So yeah, you've got all these different seasons and sales and stuff. So that's just one, again, one way you can make money, you know, just, yeah. So yeah, let me try and think of a good example without giving this one away. But okay, let's just say for example, um, oh, I don't want to give it away, it'd make it too easy. Because basically my VA found this really sick lead. So I've got a new VA I'm sharing with three other people. There's four of us. Um, we split the responsibilities on training and paying and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, and by the way, guys, if you're in my Discord group, would you be interested in um, me maybe facilitating uh, virtual assistants? It's something I've been thinking about, maybe helping you know, two, three, four people get together, uh, creating their own little channel. Um, we can get a VA and then... Um, you know, you guys can then kind of share that VA. Um, it's something I've been thinking about maybe, just helping facilitate people, getting some like-minded people together in a single group, helping them get a VA, maybe helping with a little bit of training as well. Something I've been thinking about anyway, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you uh, are interested in or looking to get a VA or thinking about a VA. So VAs are definitely um, hard work, by the way, guys. Like, I'm having to put in... Um, you know, an hour a day basically. I say shared responsibility. Right now, it's mainly me doing the training, um, but it's fine. I don't mind it. So, yeah, I'm training the VA pretty much every day, maybe three days a week out of the five. Um, doing an hour a day, just reviewing the deals. I'm trying to, um, you know, put, pass my knowledge on to him, teach him how to source, teach him what kind of deals we're looking for, look, reading keeper charts, understanding sales velocities, trying to find opportunities where they're not so obvious. Um, this new VA we've got is really good. He's very, he's very good at critical thinking. He's not sending us rubbish deals as well. He's, um, I've told him, by the way, I'd rather have one good deal a week than like 40 shit ones. And that's, again, apologies for swearing. So yeah, for me, I'd rather have one deal, you know, one good deal rather than 40 rubbish ones or 40 average ones. So I've sold to him that, you know, not, don't worry about these stupid little, you know, uh, targets of getting like four leads a day or whatever. That's pointless. I'd rather have the good ones. So, you know, he's very good at critical thinking. Trying to, again, we're trying to teach him to look beyond the, the, the now, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Sometimes you could look at a product and go, okay, that's, you know, if you take a snapshot in time of like now, you can go, okay, that's not a good deal. Um, maybe the, you know, the, it's not profitable because you know whatever the price is too high or, or the price like the price is too low on the sale price. But if you just dive deeper into that product and look a little bit in the past, maybe you can see, oh, hang on, right now that price is bad, but you know in the future it's going to be good. Maybe something of an event's coming up. Maybe. Um, okay, here's a good example then. Let's say, I mean, okay, an okay example. Taylor Swift has just released a new album, okay? So that probably means everything Taylor Swift is going to be going up in BSR, as in like, well, down in BSR, I should say. So it's going to be improving in sales rank. So maybe her, one of her previous albums, maybe let's say it sold a thousand a month, for example, as an example, okay? Well, when the new album came out, because she's in the media, everyone's talking about her, You'd probably find that that album has gone from like a thousand sales a month to maybe two thousand or three thousand. So, having events like that come up or whatever happens can improve items around that particular event. So that makes sense. So there's an example for you. So if you think about that, um, and obviously the obvious ones are like Christmas comes along, you know, toys go through the roof in terms of sales, video games, all that kind of stuff, perfumes. You know, Valentine's Day, you know, flowers become more popular. Just, yeah, just to give you an example. And it can't, it's not always just like a season. 
sometimes it's an event like, oh, Taylor Swift release, releases a new album, or it could be maybe the World Cup's on, or maybe Wimbledon's on for the year, and tennis racket sales go, go up, you know, all that kind of stuff. So today's drink, guys, is just a standard Red Bull. I need to crack this habit, by the way. Bad habit. But yeah, so anyway, VA's doing a good job. He's, he's slow to learn, no, not slow to learn, sorry. He's taking a while to get into it, but it does take a while to get good at sourcing, so it's fine. He's still learning, that's the main thing, and he's using critical thinking. But yeah, he's found a couple of good leads so far, so overall so good. He's working, been working for us now for about a month or so. But yeah, VA, VAs anyway, going back to my original point, hard work, require a lot of training. You know, we got our one from Fast Track FBA. I'll be honest, they're average. I mean, they do find you a VA. They do some basically initial vetting um, of the virtual assistant. They do a little bit of basic training. But beyond that, it's pretty poor, I'm not going to lie. What they teach them is extremely basic stuff and then also some totally incorrect stuff as well which is just, you know, I've been trying to beat that out of my VA. Obviously not physically, no, not really, but, you know, for some reason, uh, Fast Track have taught him some things that I just totally disagree with. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, oh yeah, like, when you're looking at a variation, only look at like the top two variations, which is, I think that's probably one of the dumbest things I've heard in my entire life. <laughs> Let's say we've got a, a product that is 5,000 sales a month, okay, across an entire listing. And it's got three variations. And maybe the best one does, uh, what did they say, 5,000, right? They said the best, best, the top two do 2,000 each, and then the third one does 1,000. Well, according to their criteria, we just skip the third one. So stupid. Um, they also set like a four, no, I think it was like a four deal per day sort of criteria, which again is stupid. And actually that's what ended up leading to me firing our previous VA. So I don't know if I mentioned that prior to this VA we've got now, I had another VA, well, we had another VA that I ended up having to fire because she was a very nice girl, you know, no, no problems there. But um, there were certain things I was looking at just to make sure that she was being honest with us. And what was crazy is, um, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, so apologies if you've already heard this story. Basically, she was um, basically giving us every day four deals, and that was it. Um, and then what I'd look, I can look at the history of what she searched, and every day when she started a shift, she was basically only searching on Amazon for like two or three deals that she already, I guess, had. So then she'd post those on the sheet within the first like five minutes, and then she'd spend the rest of the day maybe searching for other deals, find one more, put it on the sheet to meet that four criteria the four deal criteria and then the next day will come along and suddenly she's got three more deals for the next day so what she was doing basically is she was holding back deals so if she found like eight deals in, on a Monday she'd only give us four of them on the Monday and then she'd then save the rest for Tuesday uh, that's what she said she was doing anyway I thought she was getting leads from elsewhere because as we know if you do sourcing you need to go through like a hundred products to find one but every day, at the beginning of the day, she was like, oh, I'm going on to this thing for like this particular perfume, for example. Oh, it's a good deal. Then the second one she'd look up would be another product, like a football, for example. Oh, that's a good deal. And then the third one she'd look up would be like, I don't know, a handbag. And it'd be like a good deal. So, you know, she was getting like a 100% hit rate for her first, like, you know, between one and five searches. And then she was spending the rest of the day finding one deal. So I was like, what is going on? And you know, um, anyway, so I had to let her go. She, you know, I thought she was getting leads from elsewhere, um, you know, which is not, not, not what you want. Because if she's getting leads from elsewhere, then she's probably sharing leads as well. And that's one thing you've got to watch out for, guys. VAs, they get into little groups. They share leads with each other. It's not good, really. Some of them moonlight as well. They work more than one job. So you just got to watch out for that. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, I ended up having to let her go. Um, she explained that she was just holding deals back rather than like getting deals from elsewhere. I accepted that explanation. However, I still said that was very dishonest. I said, we're not paying you on a deal basis. We're paying for your time. You know, if I'm paying you a certain amount of money, you know, I'm paying a, a salary to work for, for us for eight hours, a, eight hours a day. 
anyway so yeah we've got a replacement it's all good but yeah you've got to watch out for VAs guys they are not a magic bullet that's going to solve all your problems they are a lot of work and yeah they all bring their own problems as well so yeah you've got to keep an eye on them basically it's a, it's a sorry thing that you know you have to do that I wish I could just trust people um, but unfortunately um, in this world right now you trust you know you trust people and yeah they take advantage I've had a lot of people take advantage of me it's been like that over the years so I won't go into too many details but yeah it sucks but I try and be an optimist though and give people the benefit of the doubt until they prove me wrong um, anyway I think that's the best way to look at life so what else can we talk about then that's been going on with Amazon or, you know, oh, someone was asking, oh yeah, I've had quite a few questions recently about ungating items, like, and it's fine, by the way, if you guys want to ask me questions about that in the Discord, that's what it's there for, feel free. But yeah, just asking like, oh, a tire pressure monitor, interesting, I hope that's okay. I'll have to check that when I get to Cambridge. Um, yeah, people asking me about, um, what they've been asking me oh yeah about ungating sorry the tire thing threw me off there yeah just asking like does this does this website give invoices can i ungate with this website and basically the answer is yes you can ungate with pretty much any website as long as it's like a proper legit website and they issue a an invoice a proper invoice so you can't just have an email confirmation or anything like that you need a proper actual invoice from the company you know that has their vat number on it their address that things like that basically um, and that you can then use to ungate an item with so yes you can do with most and if you're not sure about a site firstly you can ask me that's fine um, I'm actually going to release a list soon um, new bit of software coming out relatively soon um, it's basically going to help people doing online arbitrage and figure out what sites are good and bad for buying from so keep an eye out for that. I'm just still building up the database a little bit, but that will be coming out soon. That'll be a bit of software. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna charge for it yet. It's gonna be really, if I do charge for it, I'm not sure. I may release it for free, I'm, but I, I don't know, maybe. Um, I may charge for it, but it'll be something nominal, like 30 pound a year or something like that, I think, or maybe 50 pound a year. I'm not sure yet. I definitely help people out, but that's what I'm thinking anyway. So, not sure about the pricing yet, but that's what I'm thinking in terms of that. Maybe it'll be free, maybe it won't be. I'm not sure. But yeah, but yeah, you can ungate with most most websites as long as they're sort of a big website, they're legit, they're giving invoices, they're an authorized distributor of that particular brand, then you pretty much can ungate. And, you know, just a Another thing that most people get wrong with ungating as well is they think that they have to buy like 10 of one single item to ungate or 10 of the exact item to ungate. So let's say for example, we're trying, and you can't sell Apple on Amazon by the way, just let you can't know, you can't sell Apple. But let's say you're trying to ungate uh, a MacBook for example, okay? Um, you found somewhere to buy MacBooks really cheap, you wanna sell them on Amazon. Again, this is a theoretical, hypothetical because you can't sell Apple but this just illustrates the point you found a great deal for MacBooks okay but you can only get five of them so that means you can't ungate it well you don't need to buy ten of that MacBook what you can do is you can buy five so let's say you've got five MacBooks okay well you need to need five more of any other Apple product so you can go and let's say buy five USB charging cables okay from Apple get the invoice okay now you've got 10 Apple items so you've got five cables and five MacBooks you submit the invoices for both of those to uh, Amazon and you get ungated and then you can sell any Apple product so you don't have to have 10 of that specific item you can be you just need to be 10 of that brand so in theory you could do one MacBook one iPhone 7 one iPhone 8 one iPhone 9 one iPhone 10 one iPhone, you know all the way up to 10 different items and um, yeah, that would be fine for ungating. So that's all you need to do for ungating. It's fairly simple really, but some people get that a bit confused. Another thing about ungating that people don't realize is you can use Amazon invoices to ungate on Amazon. I do it all the time. It's the best way, you know? Some people ask me like, oh, where can I, un where, I where can I buy 
X brand from to ungate it? Like what website? Oftentimes I say just go to Amazon. <laughs> just buy it from Amazon. As long as when you're buying it from Amazon, it's actually from Amazon, then you'll get the invoice and then that's, that's all you need. So yeah, um, you can use Amazon invoices to ungate Amazon. Mind blown. Yes, you can do it. So yeah, um, done that plenty of times. So yeah, that's something that people have been asking. I'm trying to think what other questions people have been asking me, really. Oh yeah, someone re actually asked me a, re a question very recently. I've not answered it yet, because I don't really have a great answer. And that is, is there any kind of guide out there or tutorial on getting reimbursements from Amazon? And my answer to that is, I don't know if there are any. It's a very good question. There's probably a very good market, actually, to do a course or something on reimbursements. I just use Seller Repay, which is a company, and there's quite a few companies out there, but I use Seller Repay. There's a link in description if you want to sign up. And their entire job is to get reimbursements for you from Amazon. And the reason I think you should use a company like Seller Repay is because there's so many ways that you can get money back from Amazon that it's really hard to do it yourself. It almost becomes like a full-time job, or you know, it's a lot of work to know all the ways to get the money back. So I actually do recommend personally just getting a company to do it. And you, you only pay them when they recover the money. So I think they take 25% of whatever they recover. But you know, they know all the ways, all the nooks and crannies of Amazon and ways to you know, actually get money out of Amazon. Let's put the heat on actually, a bit cold now. It's starting to rain a bit. Um, yeah, they, yeah, so I think it's just worth paying someone else. I think you should just focus on, you know, some people are, I guess, like, not cheap, but frugal, let's say. And they like to do everything themselves, they like to save all the money, um, you know, every penny if possible. And that's fine when you first start out, but, um, you know, at some point, you're better off spending your time sourcing or doing something else business related than trying to scrape back, you know, a few quid from Amazon. So let a company do that, you know. Um, and that's what I do, seller repay, link in description. Yeah, they're good to be honest. And yeah, there's so many ways you can recover money from Amazon, um, and more ways than I even know, but obviously there's like inbound shipping items lost. Maybe it's missing from the parcel, or maybe they miscounted it. You need to then obviously prove that that item was in the box. You know, it could be they've lost it in the warehouse, it could be warehouse damage, it could be a customer return that's not been returned, or it's a customer return that doesn't come back as the right item, you can get a reimbursement that way. It can be like a transfer loss between warehouses, which is kind of like a warehouse loss. It can be a customer's not returned an item and then you need to get that money back. Amazon don't always. So if a customer wants to return an item, Amazon will issue the refund, but then sometimes the customer doesn't return the item. So then Amazon have to rebuild them and then they don't always give you the money back right away. So you need to chase that. They never give you as much as well, which sucks. Um, that's one thing I hate about Amazon actually, they keep their referral fee, I believe, when they, a refund comes in, so yeah, that sucks. Um, I know there's so many ways you can recover money with Amazon, and sometimes the other thing as well, why you need, you need to use Seller Repay or a similar service, um, is because Amazon don't always like give you a refund on the first like attempt. Sometimes you really need to fight tooth and nail to get that, you know, you need to go back and forth, back and forth, escalating it with the manager and then all that kind of stuff. And that's what they'll do for you. So all that work is outsourced to them. And sometimes it's a mere formality, it's nice and easy. Um, but yeah, but there is uh, one simple-ish way you can get reimbursements, like one way, and that is to, um, I'll put a link in the description. There's like a reimbursement checker where sometimes you can check and it will automate getting reimbursement. So you put the order ID in there and then it will then check whether you've got a reimbursement due or not. Um, so I'll put a link in the description for that. Hopefully it'll work, the link. Uh, but you basically put the order number in. It's like, as long as it's 45 days after the event, I think, then you can, it will basically say, oh yes, we'll open the case for this for you. But then they might just say no and you have to try and escalate it. Better just pay someone else. Uh, much better to pay someone else, to be honest. Let them deal with it. So yeah, that's a, an interesting question. But yeah, there's probably is a room for a guide out there. It's just without 
doing someone who does reimbursements all the time. It's going to be very hard to make a complete guide on how to get reimbursements. But yeah, um, I guess you could do like a hybrid approach, which is sometimes what I do, I guess. Like if there's a, uh, a really expensive item that's gone missing in the warehouse, I'll try and like sneak it, sneak in the, the, the case before seller repay can. And that way I don't have to pay them 25% on it. Um, but for 99.999% of items, I let them deal with it basically. Um, Cause that's their job and they're good at it. We've got some skydivers coming down here. There's like a skydiving school sort of on the A1 around here. I see them coming down all the time. That guy's coming down pretty quick doing a spin awesome yeah I've never been skydiving guys I just yeah I don't think you could pay me to go skydiving not really my thing to be honest um, yeah I'm afraid of heights and spiders <laughs> so yeah all right I think we'll get close to wrapping this up I'm trying to think if there's any more questions that people ask that I could probably answer on here with a you know easier than writing it out on discord but yeah guys if you say if you want to get into fba you know i make eight to ten k a month you know um i'm kind of stalled at those kind of figures uh, but obviously still pretty nice if i put more work in then i can uh, get it up obviously uh, if you want to get into amazon anyway come and join my discord group it's 100 percent free in there, I've got a full list of all the tools and softwares that I use. So, you know, and the software, uh, no, reseller toolbox, I think is the category called. You can check out all the software I use, all the services, all the groups I'm in. You know, I, I'm in a lot of stuff. I do a lot of softwares. You just need them. Um, they're all affiliate links, which really helps me out. But I only promote things that I recommend and use myself. So, yeah. Um, that's one great thing in that Discord group. Obviously, we're building up a nice community of people that can help each other, motivate each other, you know, answer questions, things like that, which is great as well. Um, and yeah, it's just good for anyone who's getting into Amazon or, you know, is already an Amazon seller can come on and chat. And yeah, it's awesome to be honest. So anyway, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Oh, guys, I'm thinking of getting a new car send me your recommendations obviously fairly sensible i'm not going to go crazy um going to be somewhere around the 25 to 30k mark um and we're looking at something like an audi a4 an audi a5 maybe something sort of comfortable but quick um i'll be keeping this car for doing retail arbitrage and you know warehouse stuff but yeah, I'm thinking of getting something for these trips here, something a bit more fancy, a bit quicker, a bit more fun to drive. So if you've got any recommendations, leave a comment in the description. That would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it because I'm not really a car guy. Don't really know what I'm looking for. But yeah, looking for something about three years old, 15 or 20,000 miles at most, around 25 to 30K. Let me know, guys. I'm thinking of getting a new car. So any uh, recommendations would be appreciated. Thanks guys anyway, and I'll see you in the next video.